Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at how to set up and use a spectrophotometer. The science behind how this instrument works is called spectroscopy, which is the study of the interaction between matter and the electromagnetic spectrum. There are many techniques which you may have heard about, for instance, infrared spectroscopy or mass spectroscopy. But you can relax, as we aren't going to be covering all of these. Today, we are really just going to get to grips with what we think will be the most commonly encountered spectroscopy that you'll find in the lab, and that is optical spectroscopy based on visible light. There can be many components to a spectrophotometer, depending on the complexity of the system you will encounter. Because many of the components are built inside the spectrophotometer, it is more convenient to name them in an illustration. Firstly, we have an emission source. This produces a light upon which the entire technique depends. It must be stable and bright across the range of wavelengths required in order that false readings due to inherent variation don't occur. Emission sources including tungsten and halogen lamps, for example. Secondly, we have a monochromator diffraction grating. This works like a prism and separates the light from the emission source into its component wavelengths. The grating rotates such that only the operator specified wavelengths reach the exit slit and the sample behind it. Thirdly would come the sample, which is contained in a cuvette. Cuvettes are small containers of known path length. They may be made of polystyrene or other plastics, or in some cases, quartz. You must select your cuvette carefully to prevent obstruction of wavelengths. Finally, we have the detector. This measures the absorbance or transmittance of the sample. Transmittance means the light that passes completely through the sample, whereas absorbance is a measure of the light that doesn't make it through. So, when you are ready to start setting the spectrophotometer, although you may have chairs to hand, it may be safer to remain standing so that you can move away from spillages. Make sure the spectrophotometer is plugged in and that there is power going to the instrument. Look for an on-off switch and flick that to on. If the display is digital, this should activate. In some undergraduate practicals, you might be using older devices that have analog displays, so learn to be flexible in your approach. The next thing that you should do is inspect the machine. Open up the sample port and inspect the cuvette holder. It is good practice to make sure everything is in functioning order and clean. Once you are ready to start your experiment, Tune the spectrophotometer into the wavelength you are interested in. This will be dictated by the substance that you are studying. Thus, before you begin your work, ensure that you know what wavelengths are most appropriate for the work to be performed. First, place your sample in the cuvette. Remember that light must pass through the cuvettes. Therefore, when you hold them, ensure you are holding the rough, corrugated side and not the clear one. That way you won't leave smears that will obstruct light flow. You will also need to create a sample blank, which will contain the solution that holds the sample of interest. This will be used to compensate for scattering associated with the solution at the wavelength of interest, which we could call noise. The first cuvette to be put into the spectrophotometer will be the blank. Ensure that the clear, smooth sides of the cuvette align with the light path, allowing a free passage of all light into the sample. There is a small inverted triangle printed on the cuvette to help you know how to orientate the cuvette when you put it into the cuvette holder. Then press Measure Blank. This will zero the device, meaning that all absorbance or transmittance measured in later samples will be solely due to the sample you are interested in. You do not need to re-zero samples unless you are intending to measure at different wavelengths. 
Some machines can hold a blank between wavelengths, but you will have to look at the manufacturer's protocol to check this. Now put the cuvette containing the sample into your spectrophotometer and close the sample port. The number that you see on the screen can be recorded. Also remember that the information provided by this machine is not usually the end of the practical experiment. You will often need to interpret the data in the light of the Beer-Lambert law. When you finish the experiment, simply tidy the machine for any spillages and flick off the rocker switch. Thank you for watching.